And welcome to the Toledo Ice House. We're here with head coach Mike Mankowski of the Toledo Ice Diggers. Getting ready for the game against the Detroit. Big rematch from last week. Uh, once again, like we said last week, the rivalry is always huge when these two teams get together. Well, it is. It's first, uh, first versus second, and, uh, you know, we feel we have a chance to catch them, and they probably feel they have a chance to break it away and, and, and pull away for them, you know. Uh, as the season goes on, so it's going to be a heated game as usual. Now, coming off the, the game Thursday night, you had a little bit of an upset in Youngstown. Yep. Youngstown's been struggling as of lately. Uh, you guys go in, you really needed to kind of pick up those two points to try to put the heat on Detroit. Yep. Uh, a little bit about some of the maybe minor struggles. The team's do, doing well, but there are some minor struggles right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I don't think it's a skill thing, Larry. I think uh, our mental toughness needs some work, and... Uh, you know, we we, uh, we we don't approach the game as professionals or guys that want to play at the next level sometimes. And I think, uh, you know, that's one of the messages we've been trying to send home to them is that you have to uh, you have to pack your lunch every day and, and you have to show up early to practice and you have to stay late and lift weights and, and you have to, to work hard in drills. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a big concern for us. Now, we're getting ready to start the game here, and obviously the keys tonight are going to be, and the guys usually do get up to play Detroit, but the keys are going to be consistency. Well, absolutely, and uh, if we play, you know, 60 minutes of hockey, then it should be a hockey game. I, I feel that they're probably a more skilled team than we are, um, so it's going to come down to us being able to do the little things. Thanks, Mike. Thanks okay. for your time. Mike Mankowski, head coach of Toledo Ice, Dig or Toledo Ice Diggers. We'll be right back at the start of the game. This is Kurt Lugo along with Larry Nader bringing you this special edition of Lightning Hockey. We're here live at the Ice House in Toledo, Ohio, where the visiting Detroit Lightning are looking to avenge last week's overtime loss against second place arch rival, the Toledo Ice Diggers. We've been telling you about this exciting rematch through the Christmas holidays. Toledo desperately needing a win to stay in contention with first place Lightning and pulling closer after an unbelievable overtime finish in the Great Lakes Sports City. Good evening, everybody. I'm here, Kurt Luco, with Larry Nader. Uh, play gets underway. Uh, Larry, a little bit about last week uh, of some of the overtime exciting finishes here. Just what a fantastic game that was. I, I, definitely the best game I've seen this year and possibly the best game I've seen in, in the two years this league's been around. I, I mean, it had everything. It, you know, the play went both ways at different points. The, it was an exciting finish, 3-3 tie, 34 seconds left in the period and Matt Zeman scores to put Toledo up front. Detroit comes back, pulls the goalie, puts the pressure on, 0.2 seconds left and Bobby Kakalka scores. Just a big game. They go into overtime, and Detroit loses on, on Brian Nicholas' second goal of the game. Big, big night for Nicholas, and just what a big win that was for Toledo. But, you know, they failed to capitalize. They had a chance this past Thursday with Detroit being idle. Uh, they went to Youngstown, dropped this 5-4 score to Youngstown, and they're a little bit disappointed about that, and they need to really make sure that they win these games against Detroit if they're going to put any sort of pressure on them. Okay, Larry, we'll talk interesting strategies on last uh, last week's performance with Coach Mankowski on, on what he did in order to obtain some overtime finishes. But uh, we're, meantime, we're into the first minute of play here as uh, Lightning are putting on early pressure against the Ice Diggers. Uh, with Nicholas up on forward here, Coach Mankowski goes with uh, Brian Nicholas up on forward. Uh, one of his strategies that paid off in last week's, uh, he scored the winning goal in overtime. Nicholas had just a fantastic game. In fact, it helped him win the Player of the Week award. Brian had uh, two goals, set up a power play goal against Detroit. Second goal was the game winner. Enough to bring him his first Player of the Week. Okay, as both teams take it into Toledo Ice Digger corner, Minatsa caught off, controls the puck, fires one in on Sisson, rebound, Ben to pick up the rebound. He's upended by Lopez as he continues. Nicholas clears it out, and it all will go down to Leonard as he's going to play it off as Swenson puts the pressure on and uh, forces a whistle here in a lightning zone. You know, that whole game last week, one of the things that was kind of lost in the, in the play was the goaltending. Both goalies really played a good game. Rick Sisson... Stood on his head. He stopped 56 shots. Kept, kept Toledo in the game when he had to for the win. Off the draw. Nicholas takes one into the net. We'll get another face off here in lightning zone. So Swenson 
Nicholas, Zeman, up for the Ice Diggers against Scalisi, Onafre, and Sabo. Both lines strong for the Lightning and the Ice Diggers. Toledo wants to set this pace early, and they want to keep the pressure on Detroit. They don't want to give them the chances that they gave them that last game. The Toledo played well. The goaltending held up well, but they really uh, failed to put the nail in Detroit's coffin when they had the chance. So Lightning here struggling a little bit in their zone here as Toledo gets one. Leonard's out of the net. Nicholas wraps it back around as Putek ties him up in the corner. And Nicholas just upended by Leo Thomas as he gets the puck to get up to the middle with Scalisi. And Grunau, Grunau waving off Moser. Moser takes him down, picks up the loose puck with Swenson, and we're going to get two by Moser for, looks like, holding. So in tonight's lineup, Moser uh, taking over Norris, who's uh, not out to, uh, in tonight's game. Obviously, we have a few fans that disagree with that call. <laughs> well, anytime we're in the visiting arena, we're always going to get some upset fans. This is a good city, though. It's a good city for hockey, and they've done a really good job supporting this team, Toledo team. So Detroit on the first power play of the evening as Scalisi, Onofre, and Sable take it up uh, for the Lightning, and Volker's going to start off in his own zone deep up for Onofre, mishandles the puck. And Toledo putting on a little pressure here with Zeman and Swenson killing it off for Toledo. Cross over to Scalisi, takes it in by himself with Sable trailing. And Pachesny trying to keep it in for the Lightning and unable to do that. And Toledo's gonna change on the fly here while the Lightning are regrouping in the center ice. And they dump it in deep with Sable speed. And Detroit trying to control it here. Fires one just off the post here. Picked up by Pachesny. On a free. In the middle. Fires one high off the glass here. Pachesny picks it up for the Lightning. Controls it. Detroit's he moves it job. down deep. Sable through the paint. And cleared wide to the corner, and Toledo's going to dump it back in on Leonard, and they'll go for another change. Leonard quickly up on the fly with Toledo. Manansakano picks it up. Bichesny over to Thomas. Taken off the puck by Zeman. Back to Mackin. Mackin fires one back in off Thomas. He takes one in the ankle, and he's moving slowly out there. And Pachesny looking for the open man. First time out on the ice tonight for DePaces. He picks one up deep. He's looking around here. With five seconds to go in the power play, we'll be back at even strength here. And they're going to get one last chance here. Pachesny, quick, Thomas fires just wide off the post there. One timer for Thomas. Thomas looked like he took that off the heel a little bit of the stick and just didn't quite get the wood on it. And both teams even strength here. With 15 and 44 to go in the first, it's scoreless here. And to pace, circling around with Gibbis and Thomas. And Cook, we're going to get a whistle here off sides. Now Toledo's really needs to try to set the pace, like I said earlier. Looks like they're trying to. That penalty proved a little bit costly. Detroit got some good opportunities there. Failed to get one past Sisson. And there's still going to be a little bit of a feeling out process. Give them about another five minutes to settle into this game. With the change in the lineup, Billy Skrzeszewski moving up to forward. So Coach John Tucker, after last week's performance of watching Nicholas' strategy from Coach Mankowski, he moves Billy Skrzeszewski up on left wing. The Lightning pulling out of the zone to regroup to wave off the ice. Both teams mixing it up now, and Leonard's going to take it as he's being pressured by Zeman. Wraps it around to the far side to Kalika. Kalika up the middle, intercepted, and we're going to get an offsides. Look for Swenson Sw almost picked that one off to go and clean on Leonard. Look for Swenson to really be pestered anytime he's out there tonight. Picked up three goals Thursday night in the loss to Youngstown. Zeman got the other one, and it looked like he was ready there to just try to step right into it. Just a half step offside, though. So 
So Volker picking up the loose puck down deep. Sets it out through the middle with Thomas. As he breaks in. Followed by Grunau. Flicks one up just wide again on Sisson. Detroit putting early pressure here in the first. They're trying to pick it up to start this tempo out here for the game. And Toledo coming up quickly with Mackin. Over to Fitzgerald. And taken off by Manasa Konoff. Grunau bumping off Fitzgerald there. As the Lightning take it back out, Manasa Konoff swinging around back into his position. So as both teams spread out here in the early goings of the game, Skrzewski dumps it in for the Lightning, and he's upended by Houghton. And Cook takes it back out through the middle, picked up by Haberlin. And they'll dump it up, and they're going to quickly get a D change here. And now Grunau almost caught them on a line change. And we're going to get an ice in here for Toledo. So both teams playing a little bit hesitant. This Larry? Is, this is kind of normal between these two teams when they start the games. They really do, they, they match up so well against each other that I think that they just kind of sit back. They look for the little openings, areas to apply the pressure. Detroit's going to look at a way to try to get in behind the Toledo defense and get somebody right out in front and get the puck to them. This line here with Scalisi, Sable, and Onofre, younger kids on the group, all-star game coming up here. I got my vote for a couple of the kids. I don't know if they're going to make it, but I'm hoping one of them does. Paul Scalisi, he's just been on fire these last couple of months. It's going to be uh, really hard, really hard, I think, for Coach John Tucker to, and head GM John Kay to figure out what six players they're going to, they're going to pick. It's awful tough. It's, it's when you, you're in first place, everybody's playing good. Seven of the ten top scorers or point getters around the league are stacked on one team, and you can only take four, not to mention the unsung heroes throughout that are not in the top ten. I don't know who to pick, Larry. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a tough one. I really don't envy that decision. <laughs> Sometimes it's almost easier to have a team like uh, maybe like Youngstown where you know you kind of know it well in advance like who you're going to be sending. Your top point. That makes it easy. But, you know, we can't forget that these kids are here for one reason, to move on to the next level. It's about, and everybody's playing well, they'll get their chance. So Lopez taking it in for the Lightning as Toledo goes shorthanded again. So we're back on uh, Detroit's second power play of the evening. Toledo's going to want to be careful on these penalties. They don't want to give Detroit the opportunity with the extra man too much. And just watching Zeman, he's floating high. He's down on the shorthanded, but he's floating high. He's going to sneak behind these lightning on their defense. you got to watch this kid. No call. And the crowd, angry crowd there, wanted yeah. that one for a call for being upended. I think that... Maybe Gord Young could could have probably have called that one though. He did seem to have a pretty good hold on him. The pace down deep, rolling in. Lopez couldn't pull the trigger on that one in the slot. As Detroit continuing to work it in the ice digger zone. Manatsa Kanoff at the point, unable to handle that. Leonard picks it up, sets it up for Brown, as Manatsa kind of takes it through the middle. Follow through Grunau, one times it off Sisson, rebound, off Sisson, off the glass. And we're gonna get a whistle outside the ice digger zone. I know the shot clock shows it's still four to, four, on two, or four to two in favor of Detroit, and there was a good two shots right there. And when you let a guy like Art Manatsa kind of walk into the slot and wind up, that goalie better be ready, because he's not going to have much time to, for reaction. Uh, he... Once again, Detroit is doing what they're good at. You know, they, they get that initial big blast from just inside the point or at the top of the circle, and they usually get a guy in behind the defense trying to bang in the rebound. So with less than 30 seconds on the power play, Detroit trying to put something together here. They're nearing the midway. The first period, game is scoreless. And Manatsakanov cruising end to end. 
followed up by Maltese and Grunow taken off the puck by Nicholas. And Nicholas picks up his own rebound from Brown as he goes one to one against Brown and he's quickly taken off by a bunch of lightning and Leonard's gonna save that one. Now both teams mixing it up here, trying to get something started. Toledo captain Dane Ben getting in a little bit tight, trying to go for the rebound. Detroit taking a little bit of exception to that, trying to pull him away, just a little bit of pushing and shoving. And as the fans still starting to roll in here, it looks like we're gonna have a packed house here at the Ice House here in Toledo. They do well, this is, this is a good venue for, for this area and they, they do very well at supporting this team. Rather tame here tonight, waiting for the crowd, waiting for some action. As Skrzyzewski fires one in on Sisson, rebound out in front. Volker back to pick it up. Over to Putek. Putek up the middle. Fires one off Sisson with another one. Playing it deep with the lost stick. Skrzyzewski in there to help him out. And the ice diggers dump it in. Icing's waved off. Volker, pressured by Swenson, wraps it around, picked up by Kalika, fires it over to, through the middle for Skrzyzewski. Handled by Mosier. Volker fires one off the outside of the net. Toledo looking to get it out of their zone. That's the third shot Detroit has put off the side of the net so far in this period of first 10 Fitzgerald minutes. Fitzgerald pushes it down as the ice diggers are a little bit in a panic mode at this point. Skrzyzewski up the middle with Scalisi. As they're gonna go into a zone play, ice diggers. Coach Mankowski, oh, intercepted by Sable, fired, saved off the blocker by Sisson. Careless mistake, almost put the lightning up by one. How big of a play was that though with Scalisi? Moving that puck around in the Toledo zone, Four guys going over to the, to the bench at the far just end of the ice. Day the in and day out for Scalisi. I've been watching him for the last couple of months, and he's just doing everything right. And he's the third out of fray, up over the pipe there. As they're putting pressure in, Sisson comes up with another big pad save. But Scalisi, third lead, last week was the third lead uh, league scoring point getter. Continuing just to work hard every night. He's my vote for one of them all-stars. Onifrey unhappy with that call. As Pajesi mishandles that with Henderson picking up the loose rebound, firing that one wide across the lightning net. Almost a big and mistake. We're going to get there, high Mike. and wide with the whistle in the lightning zone. Big mistake by Leonard. You're going to come out and play that puck. You've got to make sure you get it past their forward coming in. Some of the basic moves that they, they tell these young kids goalie, don't interfere with the players, get out of the net, set it up, get right back in the net. As we watched Anderson last week, a couple of those. Some goalies, some goalies can really do well being a third defenseman. At this level, there really aren't too many that are exceptional Very few. at it. When you watch some of the guys across the NHL, that's why they're pros, they make it look easy. Many, many times I go to some IHL games and you see some of those plays the goalies make and you just wonder and shake your head. The pace down the line, followed up by Lopez as he's tangled up. Taken off the puck by Cook. Lopez oh. upends <laughs> Kozlowski. Oh, it's Gibbis, the pace, and Lopez lining it up for the Lightning. Manatsakanov trying to take it in. Great save. Just got stacked the pads up and just managed to keep that puck out. Kozlowski almost put his first in for the night. As we said, Detroit's got to tighten up their defense these, the last couple of outings. They've been allowing over 30 shots a game, and that's unusual for the Lightning. High and over the glass as Cook fires one in. Bin quickly in. Muscles Krzyzewski right over the Lightning bench. As Minatsikanov puts it over to Maltese, he's bumped off by Cook in middle ice. Nicholas forcing his way down through the middle, taking off with Thomas. So he's gonna take Thomas and tie him up with Ben sneaking up through the middle. He needs help. Zeman alone fires. Rebound off Leonard, back in the corner. 
Leonard really flashed in that five hole. Zeman going for it, and Leonard just closing it up on him. And Swenson so rushing. Polino starting to put pressure in here late in the first on Detroit. As Maltese just tries to take it out. Bowman trying to find something, fires it around as Swenson. He's going to go for a line change. Volker directing traffic, taking it through the middle. End to end, and he's leveled by Hernandez. Haberlin. And we're going to get a whistle on icing. Now, this game is definitely starting to pick up a little bit, but it's, even though there's no score yet, it's kind of indicative of the, the last match last Sunday between these two teams. You know, you've seen the little pockets of offense on both sides now. You know, the pressure is picked up both ways. Momentum has shifted now. It's going to be interesting to see how this final six and a half minutes finishes up. Toledo desperately needing points for first place just to keep in contention. Detroit, every game they come into, everybody's vying for them. Well, Toledo really, they really have to make sure they, they bring their A game every time they play Detroit. These are four-point games. You know, this makes it a little bit harder to catch up in the standings if you lose this game. Toledo needs to be defensive-minded early on until they can get the lead, put some pressure on them. Detroit's going to need to play a near-perfect game against Toledo. They're, they're not going to be able to make too many mistakes. And when they do, they're going to have to be able to get back and try to cover up. The mistakes they made in last week's game proved to be an overtime loss for them. As Toledo's down deep in their own zone, they, again, clear it out. Pichesny trying to make something happen through the middle. Captain Dave Lawrence back over to Pichesny, and we're going to get an offsides. Now, it gets to another, another great week in the CEHL. One of the things we were talking about, the player of the week a little bit earlier, but we didn't mention the goalie of the week. And this past week, goalie of the week was Aaron Walski from the Traverse City Enforcers stopping 55 out of 58 shots, including three in a shootout win over the Detroit Lightning. Both players, the player and the goalie of the week, both made their mark to earn that by beating Detroit in, in extra time. That one was another overtime loss for Detroit. So Two nights in a they row. were on an 11-0 and two run, but both those ties, loss were ties in overtime, ties to force overtime. So at 5 and 33 to go, we're still scoreless here in the first. While their winless streak ended at 11. Zeman their, trying to get around Brown. Their winning streak, I, I mean, ended at 11. Their unbeaten streak still continues because a shootout loss or an overtime loss doesn't count as a regulation loss, obviously. So it, it, if you pick up a point, it's not really being beaten. Anytime you can pick up points, take them while you can. It, it, Detroit did a good job just not to let Toledo leave Sunday night with both points and Detroit nothing. At least Toledo only gained one point in the standings. So Coach Mankowski putting Nicholas back up on top for tonight's game. As Swenson, he's going to dump it around with Ben trying to pick it up, and he's pounded by Scalisi. Young on the far point, and Leonard's going to cover that one for the Lightning. With Nicholas playing a little bit more of a rover role these last couple of games, I don't know how they played him in Youngstown, but these two games against Detroit, with him being a little bit more of a rover position where he's hanging back, he's not really up with the forwards, but he's not really back with the defensemen. It's he almost reminds, like a 2-1-2 two -two type he reminds play. me of a young Bob Prober. At 6'2", 230 pounds, 18 years old. I was watching him on defense. I didn't see a whole lot. Now that I've seen him go on forward, he proves he can muscle his way through the D, still control the puck, and muck it in the corners. He really gives, gives Toledo that power forward that they kind of been missing a little bit this year. And you know, it's, Bob Prover in his day for dimension. being as big and being a fighter, he was still a hockey player underneath. And that's what young Nicholas reminds me of. 
Uh, he can definitely fight, too. He's got big hands. Not not as big as Probert, but his, his fists are and definitely a, to a point that he hits you. If You're we look at a square off tonight, I'd be looking at the heavyweights of Nicholas and Billy Skrzyzewski for the Lightning, both 6'2", well over two and a quarter, and boy, these guys can really unload. And then Estekhanov and Nicholas have gotten into a few things in the past, too. Yes. That's, that's a good matchup. One thing I like about Art, he doesn't allow himself to get tied up into the fights. He's better off as being on the ice all the time with his skating skills and his puck handling skills. He's better off to stay out of fights, but boy, he won't back down if he's pushed in a position. Yeah, without a doubt, he's a very aggressive player. Earlier this season, too, a game that was played here. Might have been the first game that was played here this year, second, second match for the season between the two teams. And I think it was Justin Lopez who went up against Nicholas down in the far corner. And everybody, you, you could almost see it, the look on everybody's face when the two of them squared off of what is, Nick, what is Lopez doing? And Lopez wound up getting taken down pretty good to the ice. He had a black eye. He suffered out, out a couple of games nursing that. Talked to him the night afterwards. Asked him what happened. And he says, you know, he says he's out there chipping away at me. He says, I turned, I squared off, and I, I started fighting. And as I threw my first punch, I realized who I was hitting. <laughs> and he says, all I could think about is, oh, no, what do I do now? He doesn't want to wake up in the locker room. <laughs> Okay, with 3 and 46 to go here. The pace out with Minatsikhanov. Fitzgerald trying to take off Minatsikhanov off the puck as he tries to wheel in. Houghton in for Toledo. Bowman and Houghton working it for the ice diggers. Lopez out front, blocked by Cook. As Detroit's taking control in the ice digger zone. Lopez out in front for Gibbis. Gibbis mishandles it. Minata Kanoff with pace. Pace fires one off Sissons. We talked a little bit that last game about how well Gibbis has been playing as well on that top line. I talked with John Tucker after the game and asked him his feelings on Gibbis and how well he's been playing this year. And he just couldn't say enough about the kid. Very, very solid player. He, he comes, he packs his lunch every day, and you know, he's ready to play. He's interested in going up to, I believe it was uh, Lake Superior State University. And uh, supposedly he's already been accepted to attend there. But uh, John Tucker is working on getting him a walk-on spot, walk-on tryout with Lake Superior for next season. Lake State not doing so good in the CCHA this year. They're struggling a little bit down in the cellar. Past few seasons, they've been struggling a little bit. Yeah, they have. And, you know, usually they, they put together a decent product up there, but it's hard. It's hard for them to get players to head up to that area when there's other schools. In Anytime not necessarily you can nicer the... areas, it's beautiful up there, but a lot of a lot of times players look at attending more of a uh, uplifting school, a little bit more of a warmer climate. You maybe not quite as much heavy snow. They were looking for a Frank Andalo zone to come back in for the uh, Lake State head coach here. I know they were looking at him earlier on as uh, coming back. He had a stellar, stellar career up there in the mid uh, late 80s, yeah, without early a 90s. Doubt. Without a doubt. And, I mean, the, the team has always just been maybe a middle of the pack and, a, and, and an upper or lower upper pack type team, but they've been there every year. Anytime you can go away to school, play hockey, and get a scholarship, you have to take it. Yeah, you go wherever you can. So Grunau in the middle, regrouping. Slid over to Lawrence, flips it over top. Pressure by Grunau and Sisson's gotta cover that one up. Good reaction by Sisson though, just wanted to make sure that that puck just didn't get into the corner where Detroit could dig it out get somebody rushing up the slot out front and bang it home. Good job, came out, read the play well, fell on the puck, forced the face off off in the corner. And don't forget, for latest team updates and media releases, be sure to check out our website at www.cehlonline.com. You can track our players, top scorers, top goaltenders, 
Uh, our website is www.cehlonline.com for all the latest media releases and team updates. And Pachesny over to Kalika, unable to handle that. With Piccoli through the middle and Skrzewski. Swenson sending it around. Leonard dumping it back to Kalika. Bounced off by Nicholas. Anytime you have to say anybody's name after Pachesny, it becomes difficult to say. I finally mastered Skrzewski for a while. That's a tough one. <laughs> There's not too many on the Detroit team that are hard to pronounce, but the couple that there are. I tell you, last week I couldn't get his name out for anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up hum, upcoming home games for the Detroit Lightning next week, January 19th against Brownstown. Looking for young Austin West, goaltender, see if he'll be in net, upsetting Lightning in one of their league losses early on in the season. Sunday, January 26th against Youngstown, and then back in February, back-to-back -back games with Traverse City. Looking forward to that. Again, upcoming home games. For ticket information, call 586-294-2400. That number again, 586-294-2400 for ticket information. And 20 seconds to go in the first. Lightning with the pace down deep. Fitzgerald takes him off the puck, flips it up to Haberlin, and out. And Putek picks it up, trying to get out of this period. So he flips it over to Thomas, and looks like we're going to be scoreless here in the first. Shots at 10 to 7 at the end of the first, favoring Detroit. I kind of take a little bit of exception with that. I think there are a couple of shots higher on each side. However, that's what we have to live with. And still, just a great period. It just a good effort by both teams to go both ways. Toledo did a great job to kill off two penalties. Detroit has yet to have uh, to go down the man short. It's going to be interesting to see uh, Toledo can capitalize when that does happen. So we'll be back at the first mission, intermission talking with uh, Coach John Tucker, and we'll be back after 20 minutes for the start of our second period. And we're back after 20 minutes of play for Lightning Hockey, where we're at scoreless, 0-0. Both teams unable, many, many chances, unable to put one in. And we're just getting ready to start the second period as Detroit comes out with their top veteran players and Toledo offsetting with their heavyweights out there to start the second period off. Larry summing up the second period a little bit. Both teams relatively even up. Team, yeah, they're definitely playing even up. It's, like I said at, at the end of the last period, I mean, they both teams have had their spurts, but overall, I think it's a pretty evenly matched game right now. Goaltending definitely being the difference. Both goalies have come up with a couple of big saves when they had to. Sisson maybe faced uh, maybe one or two more uh, quality scoring opportunities than Leonard did in the Detroit snap, but nevertheless, both goalies have come up big, and Right now, we got a scoreless tie heading into the second. So as we're getting started here, referee getting ready to drop the puck with Fitzgerald taking the drop against the pace. And Mackin quickly picks it up for Toledo with Bauman trying to move it up. And we're gonna get a whistle as the puck hits the ice digger bench. They're definitely gonna have to pick up. You're gonna definitely see the pace pick up this period. Both teams are notorious for this. They'll still I would, fill each other out. In this period, I think you'll see things get a little bit more physical and uh, a little bit more offensive. It, it'll be real interesting. I, I'm, I'm anticipating to see a low scoring game. You're looking at Jacob Leonard, league leading goaltender for Detroit. Rick Sisson, he's in the top five goaltenders, but his performance is much better than what his stats are actually showing. Sisson really hasn't had the team playing in front of him consistently, and that's been Toledo's problem all year. We talked before the game with uh, head coach Mike Mankowski, who admitted to that. That scores! Toledo strikes first here early in the second. Haberling just fired that puck at the five hole. It looked like he caught the inside part of the pad on Leonard and just deflected right into the net. Pichesny 
trying to pick the puck up early as the ice was still wet. It stuck on him in the corner. Toledo quickly picking it up with an open man, Haberlin, firing it in, put Toledo on top, one to nothing. 19 and 15, 19, 15 to go in the second. It's a big goal, but big goal for Toledo, especially when, when Kyle Haberlin scores. He doesn't score a lot, it's his eighth of the year. But he's a solid player, and he's right out there in front of the net. He doesn't miss on that opportunity. Just waits, waits for Leonard to flash that five holes. He comes out to challenge him and buries it. That's, this is one of the things that these kids need to expect when they, you're, you're resurfacing every period when you get into this junior level, that they, they got to look at the ice conditions. And that what's costly for Detroit. Well, and this rink's a little bit warmer tonight than it normally is. And you can see that the ice still hasn't fully set yet. Nicholas taking around Brown. He's muscled down. Detroit looking for a penalty there. Or Delito looking for a penalty. Yeah, that was more Scalisi of a Scalisi trying to get on a fray on the break through the middle. Just missed. With Sable in the slot. He's taken down. As Scalisi picks it up in the corner. Ben out. Brown handling it center. Throws it deep for the Lightning. And the crowd liking that one as Pachessi's throwing here. back through the, the blue line. I think we got a cross check on Nicholas. Nicholas almost getting away with one there. So Detroit desperately looking here to see if they can put one in with the power play man advantage. It's the third straight power play that's gone Detroit's way. Toledo's all three penalties that have been called today have been Toledo penalties. They had two good opportunities with the with the previous power plays. Toledo's managed to keep them to the outside during the power play. So Coach Tucker changing things up here on the power play, putting Maltese out there with Gibbis. It's going to be interesting to see. Detroit definitely needs to get the power play working. If Toledo's going to give them these opportunities, they have to be able to take advantage of it. You don't get a lot of opportunities against Toledo. And Volker, he works it up, taken off the puck by Zeman. As Zeman backs off. Volker might have been trying to force that play a little bit too much along the boards and almost proved costly there. Kyle Volker is typically reads the well ice very, very well. He can sit, he's very patient with the stick, and he can get the other guy to commit. And Grunau taking it in. Very solid defense. Slammed into for, the boards. For being 17, Volker is very solid on defense usually. And Piccoli in the slot, off Sisson's chest, up high into the net. We're going to get a whistle and a line change for Toledo as well as Detroit. And Tucker coming back with veterans out there. Thomas, DePace, Pichesny, Lopez. Seeing if they can put something together here. With Kalka not, not in the lineup today, putting Thomas out there with DePace is actually a good matchup. It gives him somebody with a lot of legs. Excellent glove save by Sissons. It's a crowd pleaser for that one. Sissons definitely seeing the puck extremely well. And he, nobody in front of him there either to try to block his view, so he definitely saw that all the way. Chesney off the draw, over to Minatsakano. Firewoods one just wide. Back out to Pichesny at the point. Slides it back to Minatsakano. Chesney deep for Thomas. Lopez picks it up in a corner. Back out at the point. Ben. High for Toledo, and we're going to get a whistle. Hey, look there, Detroit's getting pressure down low. They got the pace out front. They have Thomas off at the side of the net. They have two good possibilities there to go to from anywhere along that blue line. And they've done, did it twice there. I'll tell you, it's my first time in this new ice facility here in the Toledo Ice House. And the hospitality has just been unbelievable. Here, uh, one of the owners, Mike Ben, coming in, taking care of us, setting things up on last minute to get this televised broadcast. For those of you who's coming in late here, we're bringing a special edition of Lightning Hockey here uh, with Toledo versus Detroit. 
Uh, excellent, excellent team matchup that we've had excellent response. That uh, That's why we're bringing this game live here uh, this weekend. Now, definitely the management here in Toledo, as well as the ownership, top notch. They've always ran this organization well. They treat the players as if they're family, and they but they expect things out of the players too, as if they were family. To carry their share, to work with the community, you know, they and they either have to be in school, they have to be working. Are they part? Are they part of the Ronald McDonald uh, uh, charity volunteer no. group? I know there's several other teams that's affiliated or helping out, supporting right. that charity. Right, Brownstown and uh, Traverse City, I know definitely are. Both teams even strength. Zeman catches him on the fly on Leonard. Still oh. scores! Right off the bench. Right, right off, off the, the bench. bench as Nicholas gets out. Toledo puts two on the board. You can't tell me that Coach Mankowski didn't see that play developing. He calls a player off the ice, puts Zeman right on the blue line as that puck comes from the other blue line. Catches Zeman him on the tape. Sneaks behind defensive players. Pachesny. For a breakaway all alone on Leonard, and when you got the league leading scorer, Matt Zeman, coming down on you, you don't have much of a chance. Great moves. He comes in pretty much down the middle on him. As he gets to the slot, he cuts to the left, takes, takes Leonard with him, gets Leonard to open up the legs just a little bit, and then buries it between the pad and the post. Who do you look after? The top goal scorer of the league versus the top uh, goaltender of the league? Zeman prevailed on that one. An unfortunate mistake by two unfortunate mistakes here in the second by Detroit, and they're down by a pair. As Sizzen's gonna cover that as Piccoli comes down hard on him. And we're gonna get a whistle here with 15 and 42, where the ice stickers are on top, two zip. Wow, what a play there, Larry. Whew. Just a big play. And that's one of the things that Toledo will do with you. Zeman has a tendency. They, they use him up there as more of a floater up there at the, at the far blue line. Jerry Pickert used to be called back in the 70s when Phil Esposito did it. Phil Esposito made a, made a lot of money, had a lot of success doing it for Boston. <laughs> so Detroit up, back up against the wall here. Have to put something together to get back in this game. As Toledo starts to pick the pace up here. According to the shot clock, Toledo's only had two shots on net this period. If that's the case, they're both goals. Kind of like the Europeans, they don't take much shot, many shots, but when they do, they're costly. You have to, you have to watch them. They're a very talented team. Their problem is, has definitely not been talent this year. The problem has been just a consistent effort. Getting them, getting them to go out there and play a full 60 minutes. So Grunau, Kalika, and Piccoli yeah. leading it here and deep for the Ice Diggers for Detroit. As Piccoli's trying to get something started here. And Haberman's gonna flick that one off lines, men's, and there we're we gonna go. get a fight here, Kalika! Kalika and Kraus. Getting started Kraus. here, Kalika and Kraus. Oh, Kraus is Kalika. back in the lineup for tonight. Kalika, Kalika him handles him down easily. I don't, I don't know that Kraus got a punch in there. <laughs> Jeff Kraus, recently acquired from Traverse City as Toledo was looking to put some enforcers up on their front line. Kraus definitely the tough guy for Toledo, one of the tough guys, but he's definitely their, their main enforcer out there. Coming off with Kalika, they just didn't look like that was Krause's fight. Now, Kalika, when you're 6'3", 250, approaching 250 pounds, that's awful tough. With yes. the reach and the height on him, that's tough. It's hard to give up that reach and still, and still be able to win those fights because you have to get inside on the guy, and when you do get inside, it's easy for him to take you down. Kraus is a native from Oshawa, Ontario, coming over to this league. He wanted to, uh, heard about the CEHL, and here he is in Traverse City, where he got a start here. And uh, in a recent trade, Toledo picked him up. They want to defend their cup this year, so they're setting up some strength on the front line, as well as Nicholas back in uh, heavyweight on the defense. Kraus played last year with the Bay County Blizzard, definitely the bad boys of the league last year. And he, uh, 
has a very aggressive style out there on the ice. Sometimes he needs to think a little bit more when he makes these plays, but he's very aggressive out there and he definitely doesn't, doesn't back down from anybody. I think that's a good move by uh, uh, Coach Mankowski, uh, knowing that you have players like Zeman and Ben on your front line, Swenson, these are relatively small, small players. Um, you have Nicholas on back, which can help you out, but you, you, you really need a mucker up in the corner in there and the enforcer um, to help these guys out. These guys are here to score, but they also need some help. Um, and I think Jeff Krause is going to be that guy to do it for them. So we got a slashing penalty against Nicholas now. Nicholas back in the box. That's it's one Detroit place you don't want Nicholas. Play. You don't want Nicholas in the box in tonight's game. They also have, what's nice is with Toledo, he's also, if you do lose Nicholas in the box, he has very good support on the back. You got Bauman, uh, Moser, and Nicholas, guys like that, 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 that can help him out there when he's not on the ice. And right now you got two of Toledo's tough, tougher players sitting on the back for at least two minutes. So with a couple of one lightning and a couple of ice diggers, Detroit prevails on top and uh, with the power play here. Bad bounce coming off the end boards. Puck almost squirted back out in front of the net. Caught Leonard a little bit by surprise. So don't count Detroit out here just yet. There's plenty of hockey to go here. We saw early on between these two teams in the matchup, Detroit down by a pair in the start of the third. They came back to win that game early on in the season. Now you can't count two goals is not a major deficit for either of these teams. Detroit does need to look at picking up their play, though. They have been somewhat flat this whole second period. They have not really come out with quite the intensity that they played this in the first period. So Piccoli picks it up behind the net. She tries to get that out, and Toledo's going to clear it. And Volker's going to go back to chase that one down. Fires through the middle to Onifre. Mishandles that. And Sable picks it in. And Toledo clears it out. And Zeman again with the break. Around Pacheski fires that one off. Leonard with a big save on that one. What a job by Zeman, though. Just he managed to just turn, turn the edge of the skate in reverse directions on Pacheski. Scalisi gets by Cook. Take Sizen, scores! Detroit needs Out of play in the play. slot from Scalisi. Well, Detroit cut the deficit in half with that, and they definitely needed it. They needed to show Toledo that they weren't going to be able to hold them out on the power play. Detroit with needs to catch. 11 seconds that. left in the power play proved to be costly for Toledo with Kraus and Nicholas in the box. Sizen unable to handle that as he tried to poke check. Scalisi coming in tight. Onifrey there to pick up the loose puck, and we got a one goal deficit here. Onifrey back on the, the move. Onifrey's been hot the last week and a half, two, or actually the last two, two, and two, three weeks for Detroit. He's just done a fantastic job of stepping up into the play and, and making things happen down low. There's Scalisi again to get that play started. So, you know, the crowd wants to call there on the stick that got up a little bit high on Dave Fitzgerald. And they're not getting it. Both teams picking up the pace here. Halfway through the second as Pichesny fires high off the glass. Kept in by Haberlin. Picked up by Sable. Onifrey taken off by Young. Mackin. Out at the point, quickly kept in by the Lightning. Once again, Onifrey, right there, cruising into the side of the net, looking to try to pick that pass off. Haberlin, hustling to get Pichesny. As he sets up, trying to get Sable up high with Scalisi. Back to Scalisi, over to Sable. Onifrey misses that one. Scalisi flips it over the back, almost trying to get a leaker play on that. And Leonard comes out to set it up for Skrzyzewski. 
Detroit. As he mishandles that, Ben Polk picks his pocket. He goes in deep with Svensson. Skocheski had a chance to try to catch Toledo on the line change there. He just couldn't get that, that big lead pass. Nicholas back on the ice for Toledo. Nicholas, Ben, Swenson. Out for Toledo against the pace. Over to Thomas. Fires through the slot just wide. Putek keeps it in. And we're going to get a whistle with the penalty coming up or a high sticking coming up. Looks like so they're going to give Ben, ben for, wow. for, for high sticking. I didn't, I didn't see it. I wasn't watching that part of the play. He was down deep in the corner on that one, away from the play. Detroit has definitely picked up the pace, though. Just about, just about as soon as we were talking about it, about two, three minutes ago, they definitely came through and capitalized, and it's only two to one now. They need to look at doing something with, the, with this power play. It's a good opportunity for them to get right back into the game, tie things up. Most of the veterans are out here for the Lightning. You got Thomas, the pace, Lopez, Manatsakanov. And Toledo throws it down there. As they're gonna set up in their box. And Houghton trying to get something for Toledo as he puts pressure on with his four checking. Manatsakanov throws that one away. And Toledo has to regroup, recheck outside the blue line. Houghton and Swenson for the ice diggers. And to pace with speed. Taken off by Mackin as they'll keep the play wide. To pace behind the net. Back over to Lopez with the give and go in the slot. Oh. Thomas fires that one. Pace throws it back out to Lawrence. Thomas has had to have about four or five scoring opportunities. He just hasn't been able to find the net with it. Shoots to Peyton. Lawrence sneaking in there, throws one in wide off Sisson's pad. And Toledo gets this one out. And Leonard has to come out of the net to get that with Swenson for checking. Thomas looking for Lopez, a two on one. Into the protector of Sisson. Thomas a little bit disappointed about where he put that shot. Definitely, That's not the play you wanted on that no. two on one. He had plenty of time there. No, he could he, he had room to shuffle that pass over to the other side. If he's gonna take it to the net, try to take it a little bit lower, try to get that kick out. So with 35 seconds to go with the man advantage, Lightning try to tie this game up. As the net's pushed off, we're gonna get another whistle. So the Lightning wanting to take control here in the second. 29 seconds left in the, in the power play to do it. So with 8 and 54 to go in the second, it's a 2-1 game, Toledo on top. Gibbis off the draw, draw out to the point. Volker winds up, shoots wide. Grunau. In the slot for Volker. Fires on the ice. Rebound off Sisson. Cook. Tied up by two lightning. It was from Toledo that tried to clear that. That puck just hit Volker right in the chest and stayed right on the side of the net in play. So Detroit taking control here as we're back to even strength. Oh, and a blind play by Gibbis with the man coming out of the box for Toledo. They take control as they go down deep into the lightning zone. Ooh, on a play that could have been extra men right there, but the refs waved that one off. Catching him on the line change, six man on the ice. Grunau picked up with Maltese. Volker pushing his way up through the middle. Detroit trying to catch Zeman. Zeman against Pachesny. Good Taking job off. Chesney. Great job. He just watched the play. Wasn't fooled by the little hip move and the head move. Stayed right with the puck. And Kalika seeing a lot of ice time here tonight for the Lightning. Skruzewski back on D. Up to Kalika. 
in the middle. Piccoli bumped by Haberlin. Crosses Brown, catches Toledo there on the change. He's getting tied up by Young. And we're gonna get a whistle for offsides. Uh, after tonight, Detroit's idle until next week, but Toledo heads to Brownstown. They pick up another game, one of those games in hand tomorrow. They definitely want to look at trying to get the two points tonight, going to Brownstown and take two points there. It's going to be uh, make that race a little bit tighter and give them that, that much more pressure to put on Detroit. They're forced with the two games in hand. They're, they're forced. It's a must win to put them back up there, and then they, they can focus on on just, you know, attacking it, niching their way through, hoping for a little luck on Detroit, knowing that every every game they go into on any given night, any other team can steal a point from them. That's what happens when you're on top. You're forced to play every night because everybody's you shooting for you. Yep. That's what makes it so hard to repeat year after year, especially in larger leagues especially like the, in the NHL. The teams are, you'll see them come, they'll, they'll play extremely well for a year or two, then they might kind of go away and really barely make the playoffs for a couple of years and they come back strong. So Soldano, seeing ice time here in a second for Toledo, and we're gonna get an icing. Now, shots are now being shown as 19 for Detroit, 11 for Toledo. Sisson has come up big at least four times tonight that I've counted to keep Toledo not only in the lead, but still in the game. After last week's performance, you, you almost think that you have to go back to back with Sisson. You have to. You yeah. have to. He played su such a solid game last week that you have to look at the mental aspect of putting them out there against Detroit. Detroit, on the other hand, switched back over to Leonard. Nothing against Anderson's play. It's just that Detroit has that capability of switching up a little bit better than other teams in this league. Yeah, when, when you get when you get tough goaltenders at, at Detroit, they're just solid all the way around. They got young kids coming up. Uh, they're looking for, and, and that's what makes them a strong organization. They're, they're starting to prove to get depth. And Sable picks Cook's pocket, fight spin around, almost tied this game up here. And Swenson out over for Nicholas, taken off by Lawrence. Lawrence back out to Scalisi. Onifre sneaking in there. Lawrence just missed. Lawrence side of the net, swatting at, the, at that puck as it went through the crease, trying to knock it in. Back out to Onifre, one times it, deflected. Nicholas picks up the loose puck, dumps it down. Leonard plays it. Swenson putting the four checking on. Pachesny and Putek out there having trouble with Swenson. And they flip that biscuit all the way down for an icing. And the fans <laughs> getting a little angry here, <laughs> looking for another call. <laughs> I love the Toledo fans. Uh, looking for Nicholas, fans looking for Nicholas to get his head in the game. And Houghton slammed by Volker. Kozlowski bumped into his own man. Pichesny saucered up down to the end off Sisson as Thomas and Lopez force the whistle down deep in the ice digger zone. We'll do a trivia question next period. Next period. I can hardly wait to hear what it is this week. Don't forget, fans, when we're doing our local broadcast home, don't forget to stop by our uh, broadcast booth. Introduce yourselves. We'll show you who we are. I'm Kurt Luco alongside Larry Nader.
We'll give you some free tickets. Come down, see a home game. Just stop by our broadcast booth during any one of our home games and pick up your free tickets. And Leonard mishandles that one. Thomas picked up with Lawrence. How bad is it to have to bribe people to come by and say hi to us? It's kind of feel like when you were a kid and mom used to tie the pork chop around your neck so the dog would play with you. <laughs> So lightning, looks like it's all lightning the second period except for some key goals by the ice diggers. And we got a penalty coming up to the another, ice diggers by Mackin, Dan Mackin as he hauls down Leo Thomas in the corner. With that break, I wanna remind everybody too, we've been telling you for the past three weeks about the CEHL All-Star Game coming up on February 15th from this very Team Toledo Ice House Arena. Once again, the Ice House is located on Alexis Road in Toledo, Ohio, just across the border. Be sure to stop on out and catch the All-Star Game. Watch the top stars for the CEHL compete in a battle that is nearly as old as the Hatfield McCoys as Team Ohio comprised of top players from Toledo, Dayton, Youngstown do battle with Team Michigan will be comprised of the top players for Detroit, Traverse City, and Brownstown. For ticket information, call the Team Toledo Ice Diggers at 419-476-4690 or the CEHL offices at 586-286-9... I'm sorry, that's 586-296-7278. So Detroit back on a power play, fired by Sable. And Manatsakanov picks up the loose puck behind the net. Out to the point for Lawrence. Quick shot, Sisson covers that. Sable there gets banging away at the pads of, of Sisson, just trying to find that loose puck and find a way to squeak it through. Sable seeing lots and lots of ice here tonight for the Lightning on all the power plays. So back to the veteran line here with Lawrence, Thomas, the pace. Lopez, off the draw, to pace. Lawrence keeps it in. Taken out by Toledo. Kozlowski, putting pressure in. The pace sets it up. Toledo doing a very good job tonight of forechecking, being a man short. They've done an extremely good job of keeping two players up on Detroit and putting the pressure. And oh, Manatsakanov nearly put that in his own net. Detroit's had problems getting the puck out of their own zone on the power play tonight. With Toledo putting the pressure on, Detroit's a little laxed here. Four guys in the corner. As Swenson handles them. Thomas on his own, swings through, Young! Sisson comes up with a big save for Toledo. Just as that play was coming out of the Detroit zone, Lopez with three, three players on him back on the other side of, of the neutral ice, looking for that lead pass, gets in behind all three of the Toledo players and they just couldn't get the pass to him. He would have been in alone. Leo Thomas, seasoned veteran with speed. You have to keep your eye on this kid if you're one of the uh, Ice Diggers defense. So with 22 seconds to go here, Detroit still on a power play, a 2-1 game, two and six to go here in the second period. Gibbis off the draw against Ben. Tied up, Maltese fires one in low on Sisson. We get another face off here. Sisson not giving up a lot of the rebounds right now. He's doing a good job of keeping that puck at his feet, falling on it. Oh, high stick off Skrzewski. Better touch that one. Oh, taken off by Snyder. To offset the high stick delayed whistle. Skrzewski back around over the brown. Grunau picks it up. Skrzewski back on D. Both teams even strength. As Skrzewski picks it up. Zeman quickly back to poke check him. Bumped by Haberman. And Toledo gets a quick bake. Zeman over the middle, back over to Ben. Ben 
Off wide, shoots, Leonard, rebound. Detroit back out of their zone. Up to Maltese. Trailing with Gibbis. And a pile up in front. As both teams starting to muck it up. Gibbis all by himself, fires in off Sisson. Gibbis only had the, the short corner to go for, and the only problem with that play is that that's the corner that Sisson was already covering, so he didn't have a whole lot of room as he tried to. Can't leave a man out in front by himself. That's twice Toledo. They can't afford to be making mistakes here. And one of those is gonna go in. A minute five left in the period. Detroit still trying to keep the pressure on Toledo. So fan support, we're always looking for fan support and very good special ticket deals. Help support these kids. These kids are here trying to get to the next level. If you're looking for on ice sponsorship or interested in dashboard advertising, it's continuously visible during all our home games as they're broadcast. Call 586-677-3600 for any on ice or dashboard advertising sponsorship. It's continuously visible during all our home games. Uh, help the kids out, support the local community kids here for the Detroit Lightning. Again, that game number is 586-677-3600 for information. Ask for collude. And with 48 seconds here left in the second, a 2-1 game. And Scalisi putting pressure on Young as he fires it back out to Nicholas as Fitzgerald takes it in. Leonard's going to cover that up as Fitzgerald sprays him. Pachesny not liking that. And ironically, team's the getting a little feisty. Ironically, the clock has stopped at exactly the point where Zeman scored the go-ahead goal last Sunday, 34.6 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and wasn't it 34.4 seconds? Kakalka ties that game right back up to force overtime. <laughs> Oh man, was that a game. Jay, that was definitely the best game of the, uh, I've seen this year. This season, that was the best game I saw. Many exciting games, but that one gonna be hard to top. It looks like we're going to the third though with the same uh, type of situation, a 2-1 score. Grunau trying to slip through the D. Mackin gonna take two here. Sisson covers it up. Is it Mackin or Young that they're gonna give it to? He's pointing to Young. He's pointing to Young. With a few seconds to go in the second, you can't let that kid slip through there. Just watching, just watching uh, one of the probably one of the most memorable games in history. Just the other night on TV, the Miracle on Ice. Oh, and the moment, the just what I saw here, when the Russians eased up with about eight seconds to go and allowed USA to slip through on that and put one of them goals in net. So I just saw here, they eased up. If you were alive in 1980 and you don't remember where you were when that game was played, you're not a hockey fan. I know exactly where I was at. Yeah, me too. I was in Guam. <laughs> I was on board a ship. I had duty that day, and I kept sneaking back into the uh, into my lab my lab space in order to watch the Pichesky game. Pichesky ties oh. this game up here with no time on the clock. The buzzer. Pichesky in the slot ties the game up, and it looks like that goal is good. No time left on the buzzer as he top shelves it off the bar. This is the type of the, of action that we've been telling everybody about, Kurt, and it's just. And these two teams, I think it's, nobody gives up until the final buzzer. What a big finish to the second period. Woo! Detroit getting a big goal at the buzzer from Pichesny. And it all, Young taking that careless play late in the second, a careless, careless mistake there, proved to be very costly here. After 40 minutes of play, we have a 2-2 tie. And we'll be back here shortly with the Detroit report. As, as we said earlier here, that the team that makes the least amount of mistakes should prevail and be on top with tonight with the glorious victory. I said mistakes are even right now. They're about even. <laughs> and in last week's performance, Detroit actually had more mistakes in Toledo 
but they were very fortunate enough to get a tie in overtime, a point with an overtime loss. And Detroit's been, again, as we've been saying over this last three to four weeks, they've been struggling on D as far as the amount of shots that they're letting in on their goaltenders, which the goaltenders are not used to seeing that many shots per game. Well, right now the shot clock's showing 27 to 14, 14 for Toledo, and that I definitely, there definitely has to be more than that. That would have given Toledo seven shots in each period, and they had more than seven in that last period. But nevertheless, Detroit has limited Toledo's chances tonight. And as we start the third period here, both teams pushing the puck back, and the ice still relatively wet, as it was costly in a second for Pachesny as the puck stuck in the corner and leaving Zeman all alone there to put one in past Leonard. And to get things started here in the third, they have the same situation going on with the wet ice here. Mishandling the puck, and Toledo with the two-on-one. Sable quickly back to check. Maltese doing a good job of hustling back to eliminate that two-on-one, turn it into a two-on-two. -two. So Young out of the box. Throws it in for Putek. Putek puts it up out to Cook, and they're going to get an icing here as Cook goes down to pick up the icing. I'm really surprised they didn't wave that one off. It looked like uh, the def definitely could have been waved off in my opinion. The puck was traveling a little bit slow and it looked like Cook just kind of was making sure he stayed behind it there. He wasn't really hustling to catch up to it. Well, last period you had Pichesny with the sticky puck. Leonard here just moments ago trying to play it out of the his paint. Nearly had a mistake there. And a rebound off Leonard out through the center. And Brown taking it in for the Lightning. Across with Scalisi, followed up by Grunau. Young, pounding, Brown, Scalisi. Back out to Gibbis. Gibbis pounded by Cook in the back. Grunau tripped up in the corner. C handles it back out to the point. Pichesny dumps it in. Brunau taken down by Zeman. And Young to pick up the puck. Toledo trying to get it out of their own zone here. As they throw it out to center, they get a quick line change. Almost too many as men Gibbons there as well. Take it in, drops it off for Grunau. Grunau upended by Fitzgerald as Volker back through the middle. As it's waved off, Sisson sets it up for Mackin. Intercepted by Sable to throw it back into the ice digger zone. Oh, misplay off the board. Houghton picks it back up. As Detroit here coming out quick here to start a third. Volker fires one off the glass. Kalika to pick up the rebound. And Volker getting pushed around by Houghton. Volker back with the puck, getting it in quick, dumps it in on Sisson. As he directs it out for Moser. Scalisi picked his pocket behind the net. And Volker racing back with Houghton as he takes and drops it off for Manats and Konoff. As Manats and Konoff drops it off for Kalika, flips it up through the center for Piccoli and Sable. And that'll be waved off as Haberman picks it up in for Toledo. Detroit finishes their line change right now. Looks like they're trying, they're trying to get the matchup out there that they want. And looks like they got the, they do it. They, they have top line out with the pace. Lopez and uh, Thomas, right? So Detroit coming up quickly. The pace on a quick breakaway flipped over. Sizzik oh. comes out of his net. The pace could, couldn't get the stick on it to knock it in the empty net. Thomas coming in behind him, got the stick on it, but wasn't able to get it up over the pace. The, the pace nearly had the go-ahead goal there here shortly Thomas, in the third with 15 and 34 to go. It's a 2-2 tie. Thomas looked like he got injured on that, and I'm not sure if it's his hip or what. He's staying out there, though, but he as he skated away, he was kind of holding his side a little bit and kind of uh, babying it. 
Jeff Krause for Toledo seeing very limited play as Nicholas goes back on forward here. Swenson intercepted. Lawrence is pucked. Putek got lucky there. That was a bad play on his part. He missed, miscued on the puck and just gave it away to Swenson. Swenson out in the slot. As the game quickly shifts in Toledo's favor and we're gonna get a whistle as Leonard covers that up in front of his player there. So it was Once Lawrence again, slams Nicholas. Nicholas in there. Nicholas right out front again, right involved in the play. You know, the, the strategical plays here by Coach Mankowski, certainly using Nicholas to their advantage there. The more I watch this kid, the more exciting he's getting. He, he's a small Bob Probert right now. Yeah, he's really uh, really shown me a lot these last couple of games like coming up on offense. So on afraid with Scalisi on the two on one. Across, intercepted by Sable in the slots. This isn't huge save, big rebound. Out of frame, he puts it in. As Nobody he spins Sizzin around, out of frame, puts the goal ahead, goes the Lightning, take the lead, three to two. Sizzin out of position and down. A couple of defensemen there trying to cover the net. Onafrey picks it up and just puts it right between the defensemen and finds Twine. Sable to Scalisi. Back over to Onafrey to put the Lightning on top. Three to two with 14 and 55 to That's go. A big goal. That's a big goal. Big, Whoever big got goal. that third goal right now is going to have the momentum definitely shifted in their direction, and Detroit needs to build on that. Toledo is stunned right now. Their bench is just stunned. Onafrey, Sable, and Scalisi still out there. Nicholas trying to muck it up here for Toledo. And Scalisi pounded in the bench there, corner. Toledo's gonna get a little bit rougher here now. They need to, they need to start taking the body a little bit more on Detroit, slowing them up and not letting them get over that line quite as easy. Is that goal just quieted the crowd here at the Ice House here in Toledo, Ohio? We have a three to two game with the Lightning on top. And Snyder clears it out for the ice diggers as Zeman tries to put on a, the wheels here. And Skrzyzewski pushes it back out to Brown, who takes it up through the middle. Picks up his own rebound and pounds Koslowski to the uh, ice there. And Snyder intercepts that one back over to Zeman. Scalisi line still out there, fires that off Sizen as they go quickly for a line change. Kozlowski picks it up deep and fires it out to Zeman. Over a stick, Manatsakanov picks it up. Grunau in alone, bumped off by Mackin. As a place picking up here early in the third here, this game getting exciting as Maltese is back on the ice for the Lightning. Fitzgerald going down alone with Pachesny, giving him room, fires off Leonard, big save, covers that one up. As Pachesny allowed Fitzgerald to go in alone on a one-on-one, -on -one, didn't cut the angle down. We could have had a tie game here. Leonard definitely coming up big there and making the decision to cover the puck as opposed to playing it. He might have been able to get away with playing it in that situation. Detroit had the uh, three on the strong side where Leonard was. It's just much better when in doubt, cover that puck and take the whistle. Those both teams start to light it up here in the third, getting a little chippy here. Manatsa Konoff puts his Fitzgerald in the corner. And the play going around in the lightning zone. And Soldano muscles off Piccoli. And Kalika races out to intercept him. Fitzgerald dumped it back around. And Scalisi sticks him in the corner. Soldano back in the corner with Cook. Cook fires wide off Soldano up into the net. We're going to get a whistle here. These last two games, Larry, very, very exciting. For you fans, we've been talking about just, just these top two teams going at each other all season. And, and some of the broadcasts that we brought here with both of these teams, Toledo and Detroit, this has been some exciting hockey that we've been watching here. And if these games don't get you into it, 
You're not a hockey You're fan, Larry. Without a doubt. Not a without hockey a fan. Doubt. These, these fans just don't, uh, these games just don't get any more exciting than that. I don't know. I got a fan over here on the side screaming something at me a second ago. Not sure what he was screaming. So, <laughs> obviously, I think, I think something about us being at fault now because uh, Toledo's losing three to two. <laughs> That's what makes these local broadcasts very exciting. <laughs> As the fans start to light it up here in Toledo, their team's down by a goal. <laughs> They're looking to spark some interest back into these ice diggers. <laughs> and they've not been too happy with the referee in here tonight as most of the calls have gone Detroit's way, which I saw a couple of dives on Toledo's side that you can't call them. I'd give them an 8.5, maybe a 9 point on the dive, but that's all I can give them. I can't give them two. Now, without a doubt, I, they, there may have been a couple here that were missed for Toledo as far as against Detroit. But overall, I really have seen... I've seen the game pretty much the way I think it's been refereed tonight by Gord Young, and I really don't think Detroit has um, been that careless with their play like they have in the past with taking the penalties. They know they can't do that against Toledo. They can't afford to play a man short, and they've done a good job of staying out of the box. Even the calls, Detroit, the majority of power plays tonight, it's a little lopsided if you look at it on paper. But the calls are what they are, and I know, I know they like to keep them even up on, on the penalties. But you got to call the game the way it's the, played, though. That's exactly right. So Nicholas out with Swenson and Ben for Toledo, and they're get down the stretch here with the, almost nearing the midway of the third period. They're going to see lots of ice here being down 3-2. to two. Looks like uh, Lopez and DePace both in the corner there paying a little bit of punishment. Taking, excuse me, taking a little bit of punishment there from Nicholas and Young as they kind of roughed him up along the boards and froze the puck. The pace is like a tick. Once he gets in your skin, it's tough getting him out. Once I he's don't know too many people there. around this league that play against him that like him, but uh, he's a great player. He's the type of player, like we talked about before, that if he's on your team, you like what he brings to the table. If he's playing against you, you can't stand them. What is that in basketball? The old Detroit Piston. What is that, Bill Lambeer? Yeah, Lambeer. <laughs> That's exactly what he looks. Oh, reminds me of Nicholas. Bumped off oh. by Lawrence. Picked up by Skrzewski as Lawrence throws that one into the net for the whistle here. I don't know. I got. I almost want to ask this guy sitting over here next to us where he got his haircut. <laughs> Oh. All right, did you see the elbow? <laughs> Look, he's looking for an elbow call there. and it, 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 He did get a little bit up high on Nicholas and rattled his head a little bit. And a quick offsides by Scalise. He almost had himself we got a, a wide breakaway. Got, hey, oh. The fans are liking it here. So they're giving Detroit a penalty. Putek, Putek gets called Putek. for the slash. <laughs> Referee Gord Young gets a standing ovation for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be one of them ghostly slaps because I missed that one. <laughs> oh, he's smiling now. He's happy. He got he got the penalty he's been wanting all game. Well, the fans are what help make the sport. Help oh, the without kids a doubt. support them. You know, our thanks go out to all the, the, especially Toledo here. They get a sellout crowd every night. They come down here. It's exciting and and, and I our. Reminder, just a reminder for the All-Stars, you said earlier, it's right down here at the Ice House. So if you're going to come down to the Ice House here and see the, the All-Star game here fe in February, you, you need to start thinking about getting your tickets here because this is going to be a, a packed house here come that All-Star game. So it's Krzyzewski and Brown in there. Oh! And Sable with the huge hit on got Ben. Another call, delay call on Detroit. And they're going to give him a delayed call for that huge, huge hit for a charging. That's going to get Toledo a minute and 18 of a two-man advantage. Sable They've gone from having... Sable got all 190 pounds into that hit. They've gone from having uh, no power play chances tonight to getting their first, and then 42 seconds later, their second. They'll, be, they'll play uh, two men up for the next minute 18, yeah, provided they don't take a penalty. Here. You got Zeman, Ben, Swenson, Nicholas. 
Kozlowski. If these kids can't put one in, hats off to the Lightning. Detroit's gonna have to really work hard here, keep that triangle, and make sure that they dump that puck out every chance they get. Detroit with the three to two lead, they can't, they can't be thinking about penalties here. They, they, they have to hold their composure, play the game of hockey. They need to expect to take a hit down the stretch here. The pace against Ben. Off the draw, Ben prevails. Back out to the point to Kozlowski. He sets it up to Nicholas. Nicholas back over to Kozlowski. The pace out high for the Lightning. Leonard, big save off Leonard, off the blocker into the net. We're gonna get another whistle here. Puck's coming outside. So it looks like the point are working it high to try and draw the Lightning away from the paint and they're keeping Ben and Zeman down low for this power play. So you have Pachesny and Volker out for the defense with the pace chasing one up on front. One of the things that maybe we haven't really talked about yet with these two teams and how well they match up is there's a very, the very good chance. big play by Pachesny to get that puck out as Volker races out there. There's a very, very good chance that what you're looking at is the Continental Cup final gate or series right here with these Both two these teams. teams. Not, not that it's, it's going to be a walk in the park. They ought to finish 1-2, depending on who finishes 1 and who finishes 2. They'll both have home ice advantage for the first round. But, but it, one, don't, let's not count Traverse City out. They you had can't. a slow start uh, down after uh, late December and after Christmas here. They've been they, playing well as of late. Dayton's played well as of late overall. And these and Brownstown, these, we're still waiting for Brownstown to kind of turn it on a little bit consistency-wise, but they have the potential, if they do start playing consistent, that it could be a, a three-team race for that uh, that coveted third and fourth position. And, and there's lots and lots of hockey here down the stretch here. We're only in the first parts of January, and these kids got to go all the way till the end of March before the playoffs start. And we're only halfway through the season, and it's been a big turnaround by all these teams in the league as, as they switch players, traded players, moved some players away, brought in new players. And I'm looking forward to some exciting play here in the next couple of months here before the playoffs start. This ought to be pretty well even up. It looks like Ben and DePace going off. Uh, for take, taking, mm -hmm. ben off, taking Ben off was a good thing on uh, DePace's behalf. As far as getting one of the top players here, when you're when you got a five-on-three advantage, you want to you want to start looking to key in to take some of these good players off the ice. Well, you look at their top three, four players, and Ben's the one that is going to go with you if you start going and chipping away at him a little bit. Zeman, Swenson, they're really not going to drop the gloves and exchange hostilities with you. So Zeman out to Kozlowski, who takes it wide, back over to Swenson, cycles down deep. Swings it around back to Zeman. Kozlowski picks it up off the point. Zeman off Thomas's ankle, and Manatsa Konoff's going to pick that out. Detroit's managed to kill off the first penalty. There's 27 seconds left in the, in the second penalty now. And the ice diggers having trouble getting it into the lightning zone here. Sisson will set it up to Swenson for the ice diggers. They really didn't utilize that minute 18 as well as they could have. I don't think they got more than one shot, maybe two at the most during the two-man the two advantage. And both teams will be at even strength here. As Manantikhanov picks up the loose puck in the corner, Nicholas back out in the corner to Ben, out to the point to Kozlowski as he fires one if Leonard with the rebound in the corner. Big save by Leonard! Leonard didn't Maltin see that one, I don't think. Up. With all the traffic in front of him, I think he just tried to make himself as big as possible and that puck hit him. Plenty of rebounds by both goalies here tonight, so if you're sitting in a slot, make sure your stick's on the ice. It's right back to even strength, and Gibbis almost picked his first off of the night. All alone in the ice diggers paint there. Manatsa Konoff unable to keep it in, and Skrzewski flicks it back out for Maltese and Grunau. And icing waved off here. Skrzewski being followed up by Fitzgerald, and he's hit by Nicholas. 
And Cook going to send it back in deep. Picked off by Gibbis as he's upended by Fitzgerald. And Soldano and Skrzewski, both heavyweights going at it in the corner. And Grunau coming in to pick it up. Soldano still working his way down deep. As Toledo trying to find one short side here on Leonard, unable to do that. Grunau gets it back in with Cook. And Fitzgerald picking that one up. Soldano following. And Grunau sends it deep as Piccoli picks it up. As he puts pressure on, allows the Lightning to do a Piccoli? quick line oh. change. Kalika in the slot. Piccoli almost made a play happen there. Just working hard behind the net. Managed to knock that puck a little bit loose. Gets it back out front. Scalisi just can't get in there. Or Kalika, I'm sorry. Just can't get in there and bury it. Volker flipped and upended by number 22, Kozlowski. That's unusual like Volker when he loses his footing. This kid's a strong player. That kid's a bull. You don't push Volker around too often. Nah, he's a pretty solid kid. He's really worked this past summer as well on his upper body a little bit. He's become a much stronger player on the blue line. He re and, and again, Volker's, he, he, he's looking after Manatsa Konoff, uh, likes to be like him. As Coach Tucker said earlier, as long as he plays within his own game, he's just going to come along just fine. And Detroit keeping the man up high here late in the third. More on the offensive, not allowing Toledo to get a full five-man press. And Scalisi back over to Piccoli. Volker being chased by Kegley. Kegley first time out on the ice here tonight. And Bowman's going to dump it in as Toledo's got to recheck at the blue line. Captain Dave Lawrence picks it up as he sets it up behind a lightning net. Being chased by Ben. Forces him to give up the puck. Well, Toledo has to open up their as game. Scalise is putting the pressure on. Which is exactly what they're doing right now. They're opening up their game just a little bit. They're trying to make Detroit make a mistake. Detroit still playing relatively well, though. Yeah, it's going to be a big rush. I don't count, don't count this game out until the buzzer. And Coleco by himself in front of the net here looking for DePace's loose puck as he slams Soldano or Bauman back in the corner. Bauman picked the puck up, trying to get it out. DePace keeping it in, fires off Sis, and we're going to get a whistle here. With five and six to go in the third. Lightning on top, three to two. Once again, Sisson do, being really soft with the pads and the stick today, not giving up a big rebound. He did a good job there of taking that puck on the stick and just knocking the spin off of it and keeping it, knocking it right down in front of him, keeping it right there so he could cover up. And the pace on the line! Puts it in oh, for the he's lightning! The on pace. the line and he steps over Sisson and knocks, knocks his own puck home. Puts the home saver in for the Lightning as the pace shoots in his own rebound that for is, his second of the night. That is a big goal and a huge goal for the pace at this point. We definitely, Detroit definitely needed to get one right now, get a little bit of insurance, take that edge off. If they make one mistake, it's not that big of a deal right now, but they still have to play a tight game. There's five minutes left. And Fitzgerald. If you don't oh. win the puck on the draw, you have to tie your man up. We got to take, we got, we got to pan over here. Look who's leaving. Our number one fan, number one fan for tonight, saying goodbye. He's had enough of Gord Young. He's had enough of the Detroit Lightning. He's had enough of Toledo, I guess. He's out of here. Well, yeah, it's still a 4-2 game with 4-45. and 45. I've seen many things happen. Maybe around this to league here, down the, the moment. Huh? He wants to make sure he, you know he, he gets out of the parking lot before it gets really <laughs> crowded with everybody leaving. So Detroit taking control here with a few minutes to go in the game. They're going to be very conservative and play dump in hockey here to try and take time off the board. Toledo desperately needing a goal here to get back in this game. 
as they give it back out to Skrzewski, back over to Brown. And the Lightning continuing to handle the ice diggers here with 3 and 56 to go. Mackin in the slot, fires off Leonard. Deflected in the corner. Scalisi. Patience. Cues pass Bin as Bin continues to tie him up. Dishes it off to Skrzewski. As they get a quick line change here for the Lightning. Trying to catch Zeman on the break of the blue line. And taken off by Skrzewski. Mackin on the point. Over to Nicholas. Fires it up. Let's go. Hey! Game. Nicholas puts it in within a goal. The ice diggers are within one as he fires one past Leonard up top shelf. Nicholas scores his third goal in two games against Detroit. What a huge play that Coach Mankowski right puts back. Nicholas back to deed. They're down by two. Puts him back up the front line. Puts his second in for the night. That's Nicholas' 15th of the year. That crazed fan left a little bit too early here with 3 and 26 to go here in the third. A 4-3, lightning on top. Five, five minutes left, Detroit up by two, like we were saying. I mean, it's, the game's not over. You got five minutes to play, and anything can happen in five minutes. Three, a little, little less than three and a half left in the game right now. It's a one-goal game. Fans are getting into this one. one. Mistake. Looks like and we got the next next uh, game coming up here. This uh, girls' broom ball making its way in front of us. Actually, recent news around the league, Larry. We are looking at some of the kids who are moving on to higher levels. Uh, actually, former teammates last year, two kids. Uh, one's in Traverse City this year, Justin Berry. Uh, he's actually moving on to the Port Huron Beacons of the United Hockey League up there in Port Huron. And one of the other kids, uh, Brownstown Bombers, who they just recently lost, uh, Jordan Dresser. Uh, he was in his second year of the CEHL. He's actually moved on to the Wexford Raiders of the OHA, the Ontario Provincial Junior A League there. Wexford Raiders gonna, uh, big, gonna obtain a big asset for this Jordan Dresser. Uh, Wexford in a hunt for first place behind Markham uh, Waxers over there in the uh, uh, OPJA up there in Toronto area. So yeah. a couple of the kids for some exciting news of these CEHLers and uh, one of the biggest uh, um, achievements here, the Justin Berry moving on to Port Huron. He's going to be uh, followed up by one of the former kids, Jason Firth, uh, who come from actually one of the, the Bay City, or the, yeah, the Bay City Blizzards here. Last year moved on to that league. Justin Berry has just done a really good job. He's, a, he's just a great kid. He does everything that a coach would ask of a, of a player. He works hard every night. He was a good captain up in Traverse City, well-respected, just a hard-working player, he, good he, defensively. And he's going to get his opportunity in the pros. Well, he is, you know, and one of his, you know, not only is he going to get his opportunity, but he's going to be joining new teammates. If anybody recalls this this kid who's been around for a while, I'm sure you know of him, Brent Gretzky, little brother to oh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky. Little Brent Gretzky's playing up there in Port Huron, former Tampa Bay Lightning player. He's been around the American Hockey League many, many years, 30-year-old. Boy, that's going to be some experience uh, that hopefully that he'll put down to these young kids coming in here. Uh, I know. I talked with Justin before he took off to head up the port here on, and very excited, very excited about the opportunity. Uh, but I'm sure that he's, knowing Justin, the type of player he is, he's definitely not going to walk in feeling that he knows what he needs to do to play pro. He's going to learn from these guys. And, and there's plenty of veterans, especially in this league, the United Hockey League. Uh, many, many NHLers, a lot of kids that have had their opportunity playing on uh, NHL teams, um, American Hockey League teams, which is uh, affiliates of the NHL. And, and that's where you're going to get your experience. And, and these veterans like this, these seasoned players, are going to help young kids like Justin Berry. Yeah, we got the face-off. Coming, staying back down here in deep in the Detroit zone, actually in the right face-off circle. It's the clearing attempt hit the one of the rafters here in the ceiling. 
2.12 so, left. Exciting game. Kozlowski taken out by Swenson. Thomas off the draw, wins it. Pichesny, or Lawrence, dumps it in. Another and we're going to get an icing if Young can beat Lopez to the puck. And they wave it off. Lopez beats him to the puck. Big play there for the Lightning to get that icing waved off. Oh, Lopez nearly Swenson picks gets, Swenson's pocket. Swenson moved and the puck didn't. Just left it behind. He was Luckily, his reaction was fast enough to be able to pick it back up again. So Kozlowski, Swenson, and Snyder out there for the Lightning. Manatsakhanov trying to get it out. Unable to do it. Thompson comes in for some help. And we talked about how big that fourth goal was that the pace scored. And you guess all you have to do is look at the score clock right now to, to realize how don't, big of a goal that was. Yeah, and was 33 it, left, it would be a tie game with, without that goal. Don't count this team out of it, because if you recalled last week, the 30 seconds left, yep. Toledo takes the goal ahead goal, less than a second left, Lightning come right back to tie it up. We're going down to the finish here. Zeman matched up with Onifre here on the far winger as Lawrence goes in being chased by Cook. So an interesting matchup here for Mankowski putting Cook back up top and Nicholas, and I believe they're gonna change Nicholas back up on the front line. And Detroit managed to chip another five seconds off the clock with that play. And Toledo's Toledo gonna take the timeout, time yep. And we're back after that quick timeout by Toledo Ice Diggers. As they try to muscle something up here with a minute and 25 to go. Look for Sisson back in net when he's going to come off to put a six player on here as we're nearing the minute mark. The pace staying all over Ben. Took him down to the ice, laid across the back of him. Could have gotten the extra point there for the takedown. So Cook putting pressure on from Lopez. Less than a minute left. Been Great there job by out. Tom by Thomas there to break that. Oh, oh. Nicholas scores, shoots, scores! Oh, Nicholas! Nicholas! Nicholas puts it and ties this game this up. Place is on Nicholas his feet. This tie game with 52 seconds. We were just talking, Nicholas. Nicholas has just played so huge against Detroit these last two games. Oh, He's taking man. a victory lap around the ice right now. He's extremely geeked. Brian Nicholas with his hat trick tonight. Five goals in two games against Detroit. Is this kid hot or what? You put that kid up front, he's dangerous. <laughs> we need to put that kid back on D playing the Lightning. <laughs> oh man. Brian Nicholas this with his hat well trick of the rest. night. He's going to get a well deserved rest. To tie after this that. game up at four apiece. We got to go out to the parking lot and get that crazed fan back in here. <laughs> <laughs> with the tie game here. Actually, he's still standing, oh. he's standing down at the end. Oh, yeah, he's still, he's I see him there down there at the end. end. Look, I can see that grin from you 80 know what he's feet saying away. Now? No, he's telling everybody now. I knew it. I knew they'd come back. <laughs> I can see the grin from here on his face. He's just happy his ice stickers are back in here. They got a chance. Oh, uh -oh. and he's back against Zeman. Leonard, big Save. save. Two big saves. Zeman almost Leonard. gets the game winner. Two big saves by, by Leonard to keep that to keep the game tied. I was just gonna say with the lightning with their defensive mistakes here just shortly ago. Almost comes up with another costly mistake. 12 seconds left in this period. Scalisi, upended by Mackin in the center. Cook picks up the loose puck, fires one. Blocked off we got Brown. Overtime. We're going Dumped to overtime in. for the second straight game. And we're going game. into overtime. The second straight game. Oh, I'm afraid. Soldano trying to muster something up against I'm afraid here as we're going into overtime. And we're back here in overtime at the Ice House in Toledo, Ohio. There was where the Ice Diggers tied this game up with 52 seconds to go in the third and we're into overtime as Nicholas takes it in for the Ice Diggers out in front. Over the bin, picks up the loose puck to, puck to Cook. 
Puck dumps it in with Nicholas picking it up. Leonard pushes it out. Thomas taken off at center ice by Ben. Picked up his rebound. Ben circling around. Back out to Nicholas. Both teams playing four on four here in overtime. Opening this game up. Earlier, just at the end of regulation, on a freight. Mustering it up with Haberlin. Both of those kids will take two minutes. The pace, fires Big by Sisson. Sisson misplays that one. And Kozlowski oh. taken down here. And in overtime, you're not gonna see a call like that get played. So Nicholas dumps it in and he's gonna go take a break. Swenson back over to Kozlowski, trying to put that in front. The pace is shot down at the other end. Just a huge blast that Sisson played. Gave up a big rebound. Thomas just could not get in there though and try to bang it home. Just another fabulous finish here with Lightning Hockey. And as we said, in these last two weeks, if you've been watching any of this Lightning Hockey, if you're not a hockey fan by now, you never will be. This has been some great moments here in both these games. How can you watch these, especially these last two games that we've broadcast and not want to come down and catch one of these games live? I'm a Lightning fan, and boy, when I see Nicholas get that hat trick, I was more happy than he was. <laughs> oh boy, I hope Coach Tucker doesn't see this because I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh. Young out at the point, trying to play her win off, one in off Leonard, almost deflected in. Scalise, finding Sable for the breakaway, off Sisson, big play, cover up by Sisson. Sable couldn't get a whole lot on that one, he was just trying to get it off fast and get it on net. Managed to do that, Sisson didn't give up any rebound. Scalise almost got the game winner to Sable. As we said earlier, you get down to four on four hockey, the game's spread out, but you still need defense. This game will end real quick. Detroit getting some momentum back now and getting a few shots here on Sisson, testing them. 332 left in the overtime. A lot of time to play still. You got Ben out there with Snyder and Young. Against Sabo, Manatsakanoff, and Scalisi. Sisson needs to handle that one up because he's got to get a line change. He's given, Mankowski's given his front line a break here, but how much break do you give him? Can't give him too much here. You want to try to win this thing in overtime, both teams. You, you're going to see these guys double and triple shifted right now. They need to stay out there. They need to get Zeman on that ice. Zeman is. He's out here in the near wing. Well, you know, being only 170 pounds, sometimes you can easily <laughs> he turns overlook. turns sideways on you. Yeah, he turns sideways. <laughs> At the pace, taken off by Zeman. As he's trying to get a head man from Young. Zeman hanging up there by the blue line, looking for that big lead pass. And Leonard sets it up for Manatsakanov. Manatsakanov trying to go end to end. Ben picked up the loose puck, back over to Young. Both teams playing cautious here in overtime with 2 and 44 to go. It's a tie game here, 4-4. And we're gonna get a whistle. As both Donafrey and Haberlin are out of the box now. So Snyder, Swenson, Snyder, Nicholas, and Cook out there for Time out Toledo, Detroit. and Detroit takes their first time out in overtime. So last week it was Mankowski trying to figure out how his team allowed them to go into overtime. This week it's Coach John Tucker figuring out, oh. Are we back? And we're back here. <laughs> With two and 40 go after Detroit's timeout. Are we or aren't we? And Cook trying to push it up to Zeman. Or Swenson. And Thomas. Mishandled at the blue line. Thomas is having three a little bit of trouble two tonight. For Toledo. And they're not going to call that by Skrzewski. As we said, overtime, it's going to take an awful lot to pull a penalty here in overtime. So both teams, Snyder coming in quick here. 
just muscled by Leonard picks that in the chest. So Brown and Skrzewski on defense, replaced by Pichesny and Volker. If Detroit can manage to pull this off in overtime, the point dif differential goes right back to where it was before the last game, they had 11 points. The one yes. point that Toledo picked up, Detroit can get back with a win tonight. Ooh, Leonard, big save. Screenshot off that, Volker. Big game for Volker tonight. As he gets it out, over to Lopez, in through Grunau. Grunau relatively silent here tonight. Back out to Volker, flicks it in off the ice, just wide. Lopez picks up the loose puck. Grunau in the corner, taken off by Nicholas. Uh -oh. Zeman, Zeman racing. Going. Oh, he can't get the puck. Slammed by Lawrence, Missed Lopez. Missed in the back, behind the net by, uh, behind the Toledo net by Grunau. And the, play, the puck comes around, on up to Zeman, and Zeman just can't pull it in. So with the minute 18 in overtime, we're all tied up here, 4-4 at the Ice House in Toledo, Ohio. As Lawrence dumps it in for the Lightning. Cook trying to find Swenson. Volker back out to Grunau, looking for Sable wide. Sable in on, Sable in all by himself. Oh. This pass Young. Young tripped to skate up on that. Pichesny looking for an open man. Deflected off Swenson, Manatsa Kotoff winds up, fires a hard one off Sissons' pad. Kotoff again down deep. Taken off by Young. Zeman taking it up to Young. We're just 30 seconds away from a shootout. Zeman and Swenson up for the ice diggers against Sable. And Sisson's gonna hold on to that with 19.9 to go here in overtime. Shots are 40 to 27. Sisson gets kicking aside 36 of those tonight in a great effort. Both teams with exciting moments here through tonight's game. Great offensive plays, some good defensive plays. Unexpected plays, great, great game tonight. Oh! Oh! I'm not sure if, it, if that hit the pace out front or not. Manastikov threw it at the net. Looks like it hit the pace on the leg. Rebounds into the net. Detroit wins in overtime with 12.6 seconds left on the clock. So Detroit sneaks back with revenge with the 5-4 overtime victory here at the Ice House. And Toledo cannot believe it. They're, just, they're, they're stunned. Toledo did a great job to get back into this game and force it into overtime. Detroit tried to get the pressure on late in overtime. Toledo had the pressure on early in overtime. That play there, norm, normally kind of a harmless play. I and mean, Mastikhanov taking the shot from the top of the circle, the pace cutting in front, and it just manages to find its way in off the pace. So next home broadcast here, Sunday, January 19th at 7.15 at the Great Lakes Sports City where we're gonna be hosting the Brownstown Bombers for our next live broadcast. And don't forget, come by, see us in the broadcast booth alongside me with Larry Nader. I'm Kurt Luco, bringing you all the exciting play-by-play -play action. Till next week, good night, everybody. We'll see you then.